Well, the wind and rain didn't stop people from marching and rallying in cities all across Ohio today. It's part of a movement spanning all 50 states in honor of International Transgender Visibility Day. News 5's Cameron Justice was at one of the marches in Cleveland Heights this morning. She's live now at the latest rally in Cleveland tonight. Kim? Yeah, guys, we're outside City Hall where protesters and demonstrators had moved through the city, down the street, protesting for the same thing that has been happening all across Northeast Ohio in the country. It's a fight for trans rights and trans youth rights. That happening today in Cleveland Heights this morning as well. I appreciate everyone coming out today. So with that, shall we begin marching? Support and protections for LGBTQ youth. Gender affirming care was really, really saved my life, as, as my sign says. Demonstrators like Daniel Rice using their experiences in hopes to bring change for the next generation. I would not be alive today if it were not for that care that I received. And I know that is the case for so many trans people and trans youth specifically. Trans rights are human rights. Trans rights are human rights. On Friday, a nationwide movement made its way to Cleveland Heights as those in support of trans youth rights came together for a march through the city. Holding signs and waving flags, demonstrators walked through the wind and rain, chanting, Protect trans kids! Protect trans kids! To raise awareness, not just in Cleveland Heights, but across the state. Protect trans kids! Unfortunately, while Cleveland Heights and Lakewood and other areas consider themselves very safe, they don't bother to stand up against uh, the state legislature. We're here and we're not going anywhere. We've always been here. We've been here as, as long as history stretches back. People think this is a new phenomenon that is entirely false. The march ended at City Hall, where questions and concerns were heard by Mayor Khalil Sarin. We have no intention of violating people's rights. Does the mayor have any advisors who are in the trans community? And what is the mayor doing uh, to bring more trans voices into Cleveland Heights legislature? Yes, he does. It's not my, it's not my place to identify them. <laughs> Um, they can choose whether they want to do that themselves, um, but yes. We are not generally a city where we're on the wrong side of these issues, uh, but that doesn't mean that everybody in our city, we're, we're not a monolith, not everybody in our city agrees. I want to thank you for being here, for reminding us that you're out here too, and that you've got our backs, because we definitely have your backs. As demonstrators hope movements like the one Friday can help the next generation. I'm just thinking about all the trans kids that need us right now. I have resolve to help uh, the other trans people in, in, in that situation. Now, as you can see behind me, Cleveland police are starting to block up the street. The demonstrators are making their way back to City Hall through the streets. They're clearing that out. It's a large group making their way through Cleveland. This is just one of the marches and demonstrations in Northeast Ohio. There's another one ongoing right now in Lakewood, another one in Madison. This is a nationwide movement, and the message for all of them is protecting trans youth and trans rights. Live in downtown Cleveland, Cameron Justice, News 5. All right, Cam, thanks a lot. So it may seem like pronouns. You know, we hear we talk about them quite often, are a new topic of debate. But in reality, people have actually been trying to come up with gender-neutral pronouns since at least the 18th century. That is according to an English professor and linguist from the University of Illinois. Dennis Barron says the earliest example he found was from 1841 when he found newspaper articles using the pronouns Z and her. That is H-I-R. He says his research in 19th century publications turned up more than 200 coined pronouns showing how many people thought a word was missing from the English language. And while there are some grammatical concerns with using they as a singular pronoun, Barron says you used to be strictly plural until the 17th century. He also pointed out authors, including Shakespeare, have used the singular they.